इतना सा फर्क है एक बार सोच के छोड़ देने में और लग के कर दिखाने में मान लेने में कि जिंदगी ऐसे ही कटेगी और सुबह चार बजे उठ के सोचने में ये अभी तो बस शुरुआत है किसी मैगजीन को हाथ में लेने में और उसी मैगजीन के कवर पेज पे होने में इतना सा ही तो फर्क है वीआईपी सीट में और उसकी पिछली सीट में इतना सा ही तो फर्क है वो जिसका मैदान ही खुला आसमान है वही कल जमीन पर तो था पूछोगे तो बताएगा वो पंछी एक दायरे में सिमटने में और पूरी दुनिया को दायरा बनाने में बस इतना सा फर्क है इतना कितना है इतना है या इतना है जो नापेगा वो जाने कि जहां धरती और आसमान मिलते नानकुर से दूर अगर मगर शायद से दूर वहां भी दोनों में फर्क बस इतना सा है धरती और सातवें आसमान में फर्क बस इतना सा है ये एक अंतर प्रेरणा ये हमारी आपकी हम सब की अंतर प्रेरणा है एक कदम एक छलांग एक बाजी एक गहरी सांस और एक ललकार खुली हवाओं में कि हां मैं बना हूं उन फिजाओं के लिए कि हां मैं बना हूं उन ऊंचाइयों के लिए जो ऊंची तो बहुत है पर नामुमकिन भी नहीं क्योंकि मुमकिन और नामुमकिन में बस इतना सा फर्क धूप छाओ में फर्क बस इतना सा तो बस चलिए फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया के साथ ये फर्क मिटा देते हैं फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया ट्वेंटी इयर्स ऑफ आइडियाज Good afternoon, friends, and welcome. Welcome to Franchise India. I am Gaurav Maria, Chairman of Franchise India Group. Uh, you, you very welcome to the webinar today. We are going to be discussing how you can start your business and also build a successful one. Uh, this is a special series we have started called Success Pioneer, and this is designed to really share ideas. When you are thinking about starting a business, what should be the steps you should take? Uh, just before we get into the webinar. let me give you an introduction about franchise india franchise india is a company which was started in 1999 and the purpose of this company was really to help investors who are now looking to start their own business uh, there was no platform there was no platform in india which can help people when they are looking to start a business and that was the big idea of franchise india that franchise india wanted to really create that service that we can help entrepreneurs or business owners who wanted to start their own business should get a lot of ideas from us a lot of opportunities from us a lot of help in terms of how they should really partner with the right company and also help them to even mentor and guide them and last 24 years uh, we are very proud that we have created multiple platforms we started with our digital platform which is called franchiseindia.com if you not gone there please visit franchiseindia.com which would help you to explore a lot of opportunities there are over 10000 opportunities listed almost every industry you will find an opportunity on franchiseindia.com we also have a magazines three magazines we run franchising world retailer entrepreneur that's also our part we also run a very large exhibition business uh, we do almost 200 exhibitions i'm sure if you have explored franchising in past you would have seen our shows happening in different parts of the country these are not limited to big cities we go to smaller cities also even in this period of covid and other thing we are doing regular shows just now finished a show a good show in dehradun a very good market i think a very interesting market and especially with now connectivity becoming interesting this would become even better market for for a new opportunity and a lot of people would actually settle in dehradun uh and uh, so so franchise in there really has worked over the years to help entrepreneurs business owners who want to really start their business and i'll talk talk about today that what are the steps you should take uh when you are looking to start your business and what should be the uh, so to say 10 steps uh, which you need to go through before you take a decision to start a business what why is success pioneer why i have started this uh, series that's very important to establish uh, we get a lot of inquiries people who come to us uh, every month uh, franchise india would be reached by over 75000 people uh, through our social media through our direct contacts to our hotline numbers our call center and things like that almost everybody is aspirant to start a business everybody and this can be a small investor who has maybe 5 lakh rupees to invest and it can be a large family 
uh, uh, you know, industrial family who would come to us and say, want to invest 200 crores. So we'll get this whole spectrum of people. And our consultants are spread in 95 cities. They would talk to these people. And out of that 75,000, actually very few uh, really decide to start a business. Rest is not able to start the business. But why? Uh, one, they were not too sure that this is the right time for them to start a business. Second, they come with a lot of fears because entrepreneurship is all about taking a big risk in your life. And especially if you have not done business in the past and if you have not been an entrepreneur, it becomes even more difficult. So 40% of all people who buy business uh, in India and through Franchise India also are first-time business buyers. They've never done business. Uh, they have never uh, uh, done business. They don't know what is the uh, essentials to do business. They have not so much of resources available for them, but they have an inclination to do it. So they come with a lot of fears, a lot of confusion, a lot of unrealistic expectation. They come with not too sure about their strength areas. They also are not too sure what they want from that business, which what why they're getting into that business. All that is surrounding them. All that is surrounding them, and they are not too sure that this is sort of something which they want to do. And sometimes even they have explored an opportunity, they are very poor to take a decision. They're very poor to take a decision because they feel that this might be a wrong decision of their life. And I agree with that. I completely agree because uh, starting a business is a very important decision of your life. It can disturb a lot of things if it doesn't go well. Your financial issues can happen. It can be social issues. It can be your personal issues. It can be even issues at your family. A lot of things can really go wrong if your business go wrong. And a lot of things can really change and you have a successful business and you have a successful life. A lot of things can change also. So it's a very important decision while you want to take that decision, but you don't want to take that decision in haste. So that's why we started this uh, uh, webinar series where we make it very interactive. I will be able to answer a lot of questions when you are thinking about starting a business. It can be a question about a particular industry you're exploring and what you want my viewpoint on that. It can be ROI expectation. What should you expect as an ROI? What kind of a brand you should choose and how you should choose a brand? Uh, what kind of resources you need to have before you get into the business? Uh, but one thing I will tell you, which is starting point, you can only reduce the risk. When are you doing a proper research and structure, you reduce the risk. And franchising is the best way to start a business because it actually reduces the risk because you're now partnering with something which is already existing. The brand is already there. The know-how is already there. You take it from there. You take it from there and build your business. So it's a, it's a, it's why I would not call it a risk-free business, but it obviously reduce your risk. But more you're researched, more you're planned, you will be able to do that. So when you are starting, first you need to set your mindset. And that would be my first question to all of you. Uh, what is your mindset telling you? Uh, give me a, in you, you can use the Q&A box. One, introduce yourself. Introduce if you're a professional, write B. If you're a business owner, write B. If you are somebody who's in looking at a new career, which means that you are now not doing so much and you are looking for a new career, right? C. So just introduce yourself quickly. I see a lot of people joined in and thank you once again for joining this uh, uh, Saturday's webinar. So Surinder, welcome. Uh, welcome, Surinder. Surinder is the first one to go. Uh, Fahin is also. Uh, welcome, Fahin. Others also I will encourage. Everybody should introduce if you're a professional, right? P. If you're a business owner, right? Uh, B, and if you are a career change, which means that you're looking for a new career, write C. Mr. Goda Pranay is a business owner. Uh, so Pranay would be somebody who has some experience, right? So he will have to really look at uh, a business from a different perspective viewpoint. Uh, so all three are very different perspectives and I can share that. You keep sharing, I will, I will actually take your name also. Uh, you know, because if you're a professional, uh, when you leave the professional job, you are stepping out from your comfort to something which can be riskier. But I also know as a human, we don't want to work for anybody. We always want to create our own thing. So this runs in your mind, but you don't take a step to start your own business because you feel that uh, it can be a foolish step because you can lose what you're getting. Second, your comfort zone of getting that monthly payout comes, becomes so much a big roadblock for you. Rather, our training is like that. Uh, when kids are growing uh, in our Indian uh, environment, they are actually trained to have a basic life, but a fixed and stable life. So that's our training. So we really don't train kids to be entrepreneurs, to go out and take risk. We actually train them that they should get a stable job and just work in the entire. So it becomes even more harder from a mindset viewpoint 
for a professional to take a decision to start an entrepreneur journey and i've seen that this can be very very difficult because even if you have come down to a point where you have a lot of emi is a lot of cost running on taking that decision becomes even more difficult because you feel that even 3 4 5 months you're not able to do that uh, you will be in a big problem and so it becomes very important that you choose a business which can immediately meet your requirement of what you getting as a professional your cost of time professional always runs on cost of time he has a cost of his time so he needs to choose a business which can immediately give him cost of time uh, so he is able to really cover that or he has enough cash to really sustain for 4 5 6 6 months so it's a very important decision from a professional view that business owner when he takes a decision to buy a business he's obviously looking at a uh, next level of expansion next level of growth so he's here and he wants to go to the next level and that would mean that he is now understood and bought some learnings out of his current business and he might like to leverage that learning but also look at something which is a next uh, a cycle of orbit sometimes you are running a conventional business and you feel that this business is not going to grow and i can tell you all conventional businesses if your business is 15 to 20 years old and if this is older than that you are in a big risk i am telling everybody is a big risk because those businesses would not be able to survive even the most stable business which you are running like uh, your father used to run and now come to you you suddenly start that getting a disruption coming to you even people who are running fmcg distribution pharma distribution and i think you would all see in next 4 5 years they all would be disrupted even if you have a lot of people write to me and say get me a cnf for the brand i said this is also going to go away because the distribution logistics would change the whole uh, business model and going forward this would not exist this multiple tier of distribution would not exist so a lot of these disruptions are coming in if you are not as a business owner putting your mindset to change what you need to do that it will not work so business owner is thinking and that person who is on a c which is means that you are now looking at a career choice i think you're the best placed best place because this is your time this is your time you can really plan yourself well and and then choose what is right for you but you also have to calculate uh, at what stage you are in how much risk you can want to take uh, what kind of business you want to do that one advice i will always give it to somebody who's getting into first time into business one advice very important and the 40% of people who come to me are first time business buyers and franchise india has helped uh, over a million entrepreneurs to start their business so it's not a small number uh, we have sold more business than anybody else in the world so we come with a lot of learning and our knowledge base so i always say when you start your first enterprise your first business you need to be extremely conservative extremely conservative in terms of your investment you need to pick up the small piece to it make your own first success and then duplicate that success going forward don't over expect from yourself don't really run into something which you expose yourself too much which means that you take too much of loans or you take any kind of other exposure uh, even if you have that comfort coming from somebody in your family investing on you sometimes your brother your your uh, somebody in your family wants to invest with you and encourages you go out and spend this money don't take that Uh, be responsible i always say a lot of young people come to me their father are funding i say your father is your angel fund uh, treat it like an angel fund uh, it's not your uh, you know he's worked hard and he's created a money uh, and he's now giving you angel fund you need to be very very conscious about that angel or the early investment because you need to show the dividends you can create and that would attract a lot of other investors in life to invest with you because you're so careful about that investment so let me see who all has joined uh prane vine mr balaji is a business owner shanaz is a business uh, akhil is a business komal is a business uh, devashish is a professional viren uh, want to start a business he is very clear and uh, gaurav gupta surinder gaurav gupta is a professional and one business and uh, surinder chogwe in a supply chain any opportunity in supply chain lot of things are happening in logistics supply chain uh last mile delivery and last mile logistics there are two different things last mile delivery is what comes to your home and last mile logistics is what goes from a distribution center to a retail point i feel the last mile logistics even bigger business it's a very very big business and uh, amul wants to start a manufacturing amul i have uh, while i appreciate manufacturing a lot of people come in but manufacturing is slowly going to be a big economy of scale uh there would be giga plants and things of like that so i i would suggest unless and until you have either a value added product which you can do in 
economy of scale, uh, then only manufacturing makes sense. Or you are doing something which is uh, OEM for a company that makes sense. Otherwise, micro manufacturing is a very job work kind of business. Doesn't make you too much of money. But if you have some infrastructure which you want to start, then this might be a good. I'm liking that a lot of people asking questions, so that would help us to make it very very interactive. Keep asking questions. Anything which you come to mind, anything you thinking, any industry you thinking, any investment you thinking, uh, or your expectation. Let's do that. So very important is then when you really get in to start the business, what should be the first step? You need to step back and set your mindset, and that mindset is really clarifying. What is that date? What is the date you want to really start your venture? And that's something which is so confusing for people. I ask this question to a lot of people and say, "Give me a date which you have set for yourself when you want to start the business." And they're so vague. I say, "If you not, and this is not really anything which you are writing or putting a bond." you just setting a date for yourself and if you don't have even that date you will never reach there you will never reach there because it's not there in your mind your mind is not set to take that decision so let me ask this question to everybody whoever wants to give me do you have a date in your mind and i'll also explain the date which i have created for entrepreneurs the date for entrepreneurship uh, is very important and i'll define that date but just give me the date if it any date comes to your mind any date you have set for yourself it can be 2 months it can be 3 months it can be 4 months or 6 months any date which comes to your mind just share on that thing let me see how many of you are by mindset ready to take that call because if you're not having that mindset when you not put a date to in that thing you will never be able to do that so surender says uh not a date for year 2022 akhil says so it means that akhil is not firm he is at this stage exploring he is exploring which is not bad but akhil even if it is 23 it is 24 set a date write it down today that this is your date where it starts your entrepreneurial journey right uh, so in the say 6 months viren says 6 months also get a date maybe it's your birthday it's your your father's birthday or something which is happening after 6 months which is a very big reminder to you that you're chasing that goal and i have seen successful people always have that mindset they always have that mindset to follow and chase goals and that goal if it is not even built you will never be able to do that somebody says 15th of next month he is firm he is firm he is decided he is now maybe it's too close but at least he is some date to really start then and if it changes it changes for reasons happened in your case or something that thing it's still not bad but how can you spend a time even on this webinar which you are thinking of starting a business and you don't have a date in mind which means that you are not to sure a lot of times we are exploring things these days we go on social media spend all day in the entire thing exploring things which which look attractive to us but we don't have anything any purpose behind it and i feel that it is so waste of your own time because you are not getting any purpose out of it so if you have a thing in you you feel that you are cut out to be an entrepreneur because everybody is not cut out to be an entrepreneur let's be honest uh, not everybody i know a lot of people sometimes a lot of people join my company uh, franchise india is 1200 people and i can clearly see out of my team that some are really cut out to be entrepreneurship and they come to me and say sir i want to start my own business and encourage them i said absolutely i never like to retain anybody who's come to me as i said i want to start an entrepreneur journey i want to take that and i say i encourage them i say go out and do this this is what really would change this country because we need people like that because we need entrepreneurs who create jobs not people who just take want to take jobs so i rather encourage even my team members a lot of people have actually from my company last uh, uh, 24 years have become great entrepreneurs successful ones uh, some of them i have invested in them uh, they have started something and i invested in that because i believe in them i believe in their entrepreneurial journey i believe they are hard working and they are very focused so today's uh, part is that today if you really take something from this webinar is that date it would change everything and how you going to go proceed from there because that that date would really become very important so akhil congratulations you have a date now now that's your journey which would start and i think and and that would really maybe sometime we meet sometime we would discuss and if you start this business come back to me and say i did that and even if you miss that it is not a bad idea because you at least have started working towards it so great so what is the mindset is very important and let's understand the date itself i always say that i non entrepreneur and this is my own rule date is for an entrepreneur is very important and what is date stands for d stands for discipline unless and until you are very disciplined as an entrepreneur 
you will not create people around you to be disciplined and business would not be disciplined so it's very important to that you become very disciplined in everything you want to even if you put that date now you want to really write down and say what happens between today to 6th of august that's the that's the event happening in your life what is going to happen from today to that level right so that's very important so discipline would really take you there second is a is accountability you are very accountable to whatever you do and you make others also accountable for that it's also very important t stands for you will have to train yourself to be an entrepreneur and especially i'm talking to people who are doing first time business in their life you need to train yourself as you got into job you trained for life you study all your school college and then you go to for mba and then you take a job you've been trained to become a professional are you trained to become an entrepreneur that's a very important question and that's something which you need to train yourself and today we are going to talk about how you really position and plan yourself and then e e is very important in entrepreneur life this e is so very important this e is self encouragement encourage yourself every day because nobody outside is going to come when an employee does something great uh, there are a lot of people who would go and encourage the team members the seniors and that but when you have done a great day you are alone because you are an entrepreneur you are an entrepreneur and everybody sees you you are doing for yourself which is good so you need to encourage yourself you need to celebrate every success of yours every small element of yours that is what is very important so date stands for discipline accountability train yourself hard to become an entrepreneur and e is that you are encouraging you every single day if you have a bad day or a bad week or a bad month doesn't matter you need to rebound you need to come back and do uh, even more harder work uh, to get that there so before you get into now your entrepreneurial journey everybody is thought about now date now you starting your entrepreneurial journey before you start your own journey uh, you need to really do some homework and homework is very important you know one very big point is what should i do right some entrepreneurs have a very good uh, capabilities to diagnose the big next big problem they want to solve and these become exceptional entrepreneurs we all talk about these uh, eon musks and likes of them and and they are very very good and very sharp and uh, they are people who are able to really define the world some human problem which is happening and they go out and address that problem and they become the super uh, entrepreneurs rest are not like them even mukesh shamani is not like elon musk uh, he is very successful but he is not solved any exceptional problem or he invented he is not an inventor uh, he is very sharp to understand where is the gap and how can he create a meaningful business model in that so there are two types of entrepreneurs to me one are very innovators uh, people who can create something which is fresh world has never seen that they were very sharp uh, to create that and rest are uh, they are followers they follow something successful uh, but they are very good to know what would work at what time the timing is perfect their timing is super uh, and both have both strengths and weaknesses so you need to really define yourself where you are if you are somebody who has genuine innovation genuine problem solving and genuine uh, issues you can address then maybe you have ability to start your own startup and uh, really work on that but if you are not in that and you have to be honest uh, that you have uh, no striking idea or something which can really come from your capability right uh, then there is nothing bad to really go out and follow something which is exceptionally happening like look at the technology unicorns in india not even a single unicorn in india which has been built uh, is a original idea including the first few ones the e-commerce one the flipkart was not a original idea it was a copy of amazon uh, ola is not a original idea it is copy of uber uh, so we have built great entrepreneurs in india which have no original idea they were very good to quickly know what is disrupting the world and they quickly go out and do it right so it's never a bad situation to be done i think you should not feel bad nobody really went down to bunsels and said you created a flip card which was just a pickup from amazon uh, exactly pickup from amazon because amazon used to be initially selling books they were selling books and they started selling everything they started selling everything and it is become a meaningful competition to amazon in india and that's how the opportunity is so you need to have to ask yourself where do you stand where do you stand and then start preparing yourself if you are in this large part of people are in this Uh, which means that they are in about 98% or 
99% would fit hair which is which is good because they are they are people who are i call that entrepreneur has to do three things uh, innovation execution and troubleshooting so they are good execution people they are good execution people they go and go execution they don't really do too much of innovation they pick up an opportunity they pick up an opportunity and make it scalable and take it to the next level so that's very important so you need to really do start doing your homework and now let's start working on 10 points which would set your journey as an entrepreneur when you're doing the first part which is a selection of an opportunity which is the most important and probably 60% of your performance would base on what you select and why and you need to really ask why are you choosing this opportunity versus so many opportunities available in the market and when you take what what so many opportunities they are investment opportunity they can be passive they can be active investments opportunities why are you choosing this opportunity and how you choose that's a very important question people get confused and they they talk about different opportunities different time a lot of people call me and uh, discuss a particular opportunity by the time i'm explaining that opportunity they've already gone to new one and they said you have this and you have this they keep throwing the names which comes to their mind and they're not to sure about why they're doing it so first part is really about uh, understanding where you coming from what is your strength area what is your weakness very clearly and you need to maybe go and ask uh, somebody your great friend family member and say what is my weakness uh, what what would not work in what i cannot bring to the business then i would need to find people around that because business would need everything and i don't have maybe that second you need to understand your resources uh, what is the real resources available with you and never overestimate your resources if you have 20 lakh rupees you have to be very honest that you have 20 lakh rupees and uh, don't borrow too much don't take debt don't take too much of borrowing because it puts unwanted pressure and especially my advice to a lot of people who are doing first time business don't do this uh, be very very conscious about that it's not a problem uh, that you start a small business i'll tell you a story i was in ahmedabad i always tell this story because it's so close to me and i felt that it was something which is uh, uh, very rare in india we see we see it in dubai we see it in london we see it in new york so i actually started got into a cab and uh, and i asked the, uh, the driver and said you have to go there and he replied me in english which was very rare uh, especially in ahmedabad you would not do that in chennai sometimes it happens uh, and but uh, he replied to me in english and i again very courteously asked him again this and i think again he replied me in english so it went on for some time and i felt came very conscious that maybe this time he driver didn't show up the owner of the car has come and he's driving himself so i politely asked him you know you've been driving this car and why uh, you you run this entire thing and he says i used to work in icic as a manager and uh, and this is the time where uber really started and this was early days of uber where the people were making a lot of money in in putting these cabs so he says i invested into one car and uh, which i put a driver and i made money and i would invest into another one and then third i started driving myself because i make most uh, out of three investments and i am buying another luxury car now which i will put it with a company uh, for their entire thing. so he moved from there and he drives himself uh, that entire thing and i congratulated him and i said this is the journey of entrepreneurship if you are not ashamed of doing even small work which looks from outside while he was making good money uh, uh, as ic as a manager he might be getting 40000 rupees now he was making maybe 1.5 lakh or 2 lakh rupees end of the day why are we existing why are we existing because we want to do good for our family we want to really get them the best comfort and anything which you do which can do that for your family is always going to be encouraging so i salute people like them i salute entrepreneurs who are in the business so always be very clear about your resources very clear about resources once you have done that then really choose the right industry why are you choosing this industry over all these industries available there very important question because if you choosing this industry what else you are bringing in outside money in this industry and you feel that this would work for you or it is why you choosing this industry because you feel that the next 5 years is is going to be great for this industry and how you studied this industry that's also a very important question and this is where area where franchise india really works very hard we have done over uh, last uh, one year from 22nd of march when lockdown happened every single day a new opportunity is presented by franchise india every day every day not even one single holiday has been taken no eid no diwali no new year every day we have presented an opportunity 
this is exactly why we did it because we wanted to build the knowledge of people every one one hour the company presents and they talk about the industry growth how it is happening what is the competition everything you know about that so if you are going in a journey of indirecting the task for you all of you is pick up four industries four industries which you feel would be right for you and some of you can write uh, that in the chat box let's make it very interactive and and i will see why you choosing that like vimal is saying i have an experience in pharma and he wants to look at fmcg or pharma very clearly distribution is his game he understand distribution that's why he is asking for that so go out and and share what four industries come to your mind you might not be prepared but you can just go out and share what four industries come to your mind and uh, and these are originally you thought you are in that thing or you just follower and sometimes people just uh, follow a lot of people write f and b or something like that because they just like uh, you know restaurant businesses because they're more glamorous in that sense uh, but they don't know depth of that so four industries you need to really choose once you have chosen those four industries then you need to really choose the right brand why you choose the particular brand uh, over his competition right so if i have chosen four industries i have chosen pharma uh, maybe healthcare at large i have chosen say uh, services direct to home services business uh, uh, very interesting business like laundry dry cleaning a lot of uh, services businesses is going to be very very big in times to come even gardening services to your home or cleaning services to your home or pesticide service to your home is all going to be a very very big business is subscription business people same customers keep coming back or you chosen something else you chosen uh, anything which is uh, in consumer space and and you have chosen something in in any other other space also we have franchise india has education retail healthcare beauty fitness uh, many many industries are there so why are you choosing these four uh, it's very very important uh, for one to understand and then why are you choosing these particular brands so if i would have been in your place i would say four industries and let me shortlist about 10 brands 10 brands which i want to study in depth uh, they i want to understand the business model i want to understand the financial model i want to understand their past performance i also need to understand and research which are the gap areas where this business can thrive and why uh, we are doing a lot of uh, companies now a lot of data analytics is available like we are doing a company out of chennai which is a big meat retail company so they have data analytics so they know what demand can come from which neighborhood of bangalore what neighbor demand can come out of this entire thing because technology can give you that data so they can really bring in a lot of predictability in the business model so gorav says telecom food consulting and clm i don't know what clm means uh, Uh, somebody says fnb that like a lot of people say fnb balaji says consultancy logistics distribution and services i can clearly see consultancy because he might be experienced garson and he wants to bring more value to what his experience is uh, and that's good uh, knowledge businesses are very very big uh, vimal says pharma fmcg automat automobile restaurant and automobile can be sales and it can be service it can be aftermarket it can be any other thing somebody says e-commerce e-commerce uh, delivery points because you feel that e-commerce is the way to go somebody says ev uh, uh, pramod dhirani says ev ev is a big future but very confusing as industry how do you choose which brand the 300 brands which are producing ev are registered under uh, register of uh, uh, automobile so uh, under that registration they are producing the oems 300 oems now and this number would go to 500 so 500 brand dealerships are available which brand you want to partner with and why that's also very much their startups and they are very mature companies also uh, somebody wants to do content creation somebody wants to do consumer life cycle man- management okay so consumer life cycle management that's a role which is very interesting space a very very interesting space uh, somebody wants to do sustainability like recycling a huge opportunity in that a uh, phenomenal opportunity but big gestation cycles big gestation cycles but a lot of good policies coming there like plastic waste Uh, now every company which produces or uses plastic has to bring back 30% recycled in the system which means that the pepsi cos and the coca colas have to take 30% back which means that if you are even just a service provider to help these companies uh, you have a great opportunity so sustainability recycling uh, renewable energy green energy is a is a huge opportunity uh, we are launching a big project on on uh, solar uh, which is the largest company in india and we are rolling out a massive project for solar for that company we are doing a lot of work in the recycling space we are doing a lot of work in all the other uh, areas which we are doing a lot of content 
based companies which we are doing the work on that so once you have shortlisted the brand and you understood the entire thing then you need to really understand uh, what is your financial objective this is very important uh, because end of the day like shivani is asked for recycling it looks sustainability and recycling but her objective of financial doesn't match right say this is a great industry but it is going to take 2 years before she can start making money in that now she doesn't want to days for 2 years so sometimes your industry you choose is close to you because you are passionate about it or you follow that but it is not giving you the financial return you expect from that and this is what i do with a lot of investors i i really do this judgment with them and say look these are two have to have balance you want to do something which you like but what you like should also give you uh, what you expect from your life that's very important rather this is more important a lot of people are actually not doing businesses just because they're passionate about it they they do this business because they can make good money which they can follow their passion right so it might be an opportunity sometimes you could do something else which makes you good money and you can follow your passion uh, not the other way around uh, so that's very important balance you need to really do that so understand your financial piece and finally understand your micro market you need to do the research of the prospective market where you want to do that because there might be micro competition in the same market so that's very very important once you have done that then the difficult part starts is to match your resources to the opportunity you selected so which means that what kind of funding which would be required in this what kind of team you would need to require what kind of timelines you need to follow what other resources are required it means property and that has to be very clearly detailed down and you need to write a good business plan and a financial plan and our consultants really work with you to write that concept plan with you once that is done then you need to start working on negotiating that opportunity that's very difficult and sometimes emotionally you are you are involved now and you want to do this opportunity but you also have to know that unless and until you have a favorable negotiated terms this is not going to work for you so how do you really negotiate hard and what points you need to negotiate if you missed my webinar uh, i did this 20 points of legal which you need to negotiate in a success in your uh, series in past and if you need uh, a copy for that we will be happy to send you a pdf copy so 20 points which are very important for you to be uh, ready to know and negotiate hard on your legal contracts and this is not only the legal contract you do with the company which you are tying up with but it also with the property which you are signing up the office you are doing it or even a partnership you are coming in and this is one of the mistakes a lot of founders do they start come together without having any partnership they become shareholders and start a company and later they have disputes they have disputes and when i will ask them that what happened and they will say oh because he was my very close friend i never thought there is a need to do a contract and i feel that is wrong even if you're doing with your with your friend or anybody you partnering with your family do a contract do a contract uh, i am not saying that you have to do it with your immediate brother or sister because they are part of your uh, first family so they, obviously i think that runs in our our family that we we have a different uh, view point on that but if you are doing with anybody else uh, which you know maybe colleague in the office which you have worked with for years and you want to start a business uh, you are you met on a professional ground uh, you might have become good friend you might have dinners together and drinks together but you still need to sign a contract and sometimes you hesitate so dying these contracts are very important then you need to really start understanding what is the kind of support you are going to get from a franchisor very important and you don't have to shy away from that you need to ask what are training you going to provide me how are you going to provide me the right operating manuals training manuals and if you are giving me training would you going to be training me on the business in detail and this is a mistake a lot of people who take franchises they go to a franchisor and say you going to support me everything and that's what i expect and the franchisor would also be very smart and say oh don't worry just sign up arrest everything we will handle this is a blunder it's your business you have to run it nobody is going to run for you it's a mistake people are doing so uh, you need to go out and say i don't want you to run my business i am taking your franchise but i would run that business so which means what my expectation is that you will train me on your business to understand in depth your brand so that i can run my business that's the smart people that's entrepreneur entrepreneurs don't really wait for somebody else to do things for them they train themselves they train themselves that they can handle that business even there is a diversity i have seen a 
because some companies have collapsed at the top, which means the brand has collapsed, but the franchise is still performing. He's doing well because he was in control of his own business. He has nothing to do with the parent company not doing well or something. And this happens in franchising all the time. We see sometimes great operators are doing well and poor operators are not able to do it because they are not able to sustain that business. So very importantly, ask yourself all the points which you need from a franchiser and don't do it anything verbal. Everything has to be very well documented. Again, area which Franchise India helps you uh, to do that. Somebody says, Surinder says, healthcare, healthcare is a great opportunity. Health tech is a great opportunity. We are doing a lot of work in direct to home healthcare. Uh, direct to home healthcare is going to be phenomenal in the next five to 10 years because uh, not only senior care, but uh, small uh, healthcare issues which would be serviced from health and health tech would be able to enable that. Now direct to home for pharma is also very, very big. Now, no more we will go to the pharmacies and order medicines. Uh, everything would come to your home. I'm not saying the pharmacies would go out. The pharmacies would become what I call insta points. These would be insta points which can service this last mile a delivery of uh, medicine in less than 10 minutes. So which means, which is already happening in some funds, your pharmacy is serving that. But technology would empower that and it would benefit consumer. I've been saying this for last 10 years. A lot of people didn't uh, understood that way. So few things add no logic uh, to me. The next would be liquor. Liquor would be another thing which you don't have to go to these shops to buy that. It's a difficult, complex, and I think it would also be delivered. So anything which is can be delivered would be delivered, but this small shop owner would always be there. This franchisee would always be there because he will handle the last mile fulfillment. So it's a beautiful model where the fulfillment is done by this shop, which means that 50-60% of his business would come from instant delivery uh, to homes, and 50% maybe retail customer who is passing by, is coming there, and he's picking up something which needs to be done that. So that's the future of uh, retail as I see. So once you have negotiated the right contract and the day has come where you have to start your business, this is another very important. You need to really create a successful business launch cycle. And I divide this cycle into three parts. One is your incubation time. First three months, don't be so excited. This is not a business which you understand completely. You don't know what a challenge is going to come from. No need to do this grand launch and bring your uncles and aunts and, and all these people to come and cut the ribbon and just want to tell the world that. And, and I think I get so many of that every single day because everybody who launches sends me a WhatsApp and say these balloons are being put in. And I, think. I, I congratulate them. But I also feel that they don't know the business. Uh, they, should, they should do go out and pray and, and do the entire thing. Maybe take a first team picture and tell people that you have started and you're there to service them. But no need to do the launch uh, because you don't know the business. You have, you have to learn the business from here. It's your incubation time. You're incubating your business. You need to maybe bring your fam first family. And uh, if you want to show respect to your father, mother, and do another thing, do that. But no need to do grand launch and big ads and things of that nature. No need because you don't know the business. So the first three months, you need to invest into knowing that business. Learn every smallest thing which happens in that business. You need to learn it. You need to champion it. You are expert on every role your business wants. You can do every role, right? I have been successful in franchising, but I can tell you only one company, Franchise India, I can do every role. I can do every role in my company because I've done all. So I'm in control of my business, you know, uh, but a lot of other investments I've done where I'm not in control with uh, everything. I don't know the business too ahead. While I know from, from outside because I'm an investor in that business, but I'm not a right operator because I don't know the business. Uh, and, and the business I would know, I can do every part of that business, every part of that business. So, so you need to really be very clear about that part. So first three months is incubation. And second is sustenance. It's a very, very important that you bring stability uh, to your business model. So your business is stable. It's not losing money. It's cash positive. Uh, you're able to retain your teams. The teams are excited. They're seeing the future. And then you go to the third cycle, which is scale. You want to now scale the business. And then you want to really bring in overall sustainability of the business model that business can run on processes and systems. And you can overlook that. This is a journey every entrepreneur has to do. Uh, this journey is very, very structured. It takes normally about a year uh, from this stage to this stage where you can really say, now I can take a break and go out with five days with my family and I know my business is not going to change. For 10 days, I'm going to enjoy my holiday. My business is not going to change. 
And once you have done the first life cycle of journey of your success story, that you are successful. Now, the mistake a lot of people do is that they go out and create something else now. Now they're excited in something else. They, because we get fatigued. Anything which we do in life, we get fatigued and we want to do something else. That's the human nature. So it is again foolishness. You worked hard to build something successful. Now is the time to reproduce that success, which means that duplicate that success. Because now you're successful, you will be able to attract a lot of capital. A lot of people would like to invest with you. If I go out and say, look, I've been running this restaurant and this uh, franchise of mine and it's been doing very well and I've made uh, good money and I want to start four more and I'm raising money because I already know uh, that I've done the first one and I can show my books. It's already making five lakh rupees a month and I'm very profitable and I want to do four more because I'm trained and I want to be looking for investors with me. You will get investors. You will, they will back you up. They will back you up because you're now a successful entrepreneur. And this is a mistake a lot of franchise owners do. They start one franchise, they become very successful and they buy another brand and they buy another brand. I said, why would you not go out and create a multi-unit on that? Why would you create new things and not do the same and become successful and start asking people to invest with you? And, and because you now know how to operate it. And this is how successful entrepreneurs in US have done that. Somebody owns 100 Burger Kings. Somebody has 100 uh, Subways. Somebody would have 7, 11, 200 stores because they multiplied their success. They multiplied success. As you reach to a point where you have meaningful business size and you have built a sustenance, you have a good team, you have good processes, that's where your wealth creation time comes in. And that also is an event in your life. Remember, there are two big events which happen in entrepreneurial journey. One, the event which you would create when you start the business. That's your date with your entrepreneurship journey. The second event happens when you do the exit. When you do the exit, you create a wealth creation. And that wealth creation gives you what all you wanted uh, from this entrepreneurial journey. So these two dates have to be firm in your mind. If you want to be a very successful entrepreneur, you need to have these two dates clear in your mind and you should really work towards those your dates. First milestone is get the right business in. Then get into stability, get into right, get to a level, reproduce your success and get down to a point where you can then find an exit. And that would be, become a very successful for you. So friends, this was today's webinar. Hope you, I was able to give you some insights, some kind of a structure somebody wants to do. Uh, Abhiraj is in Goa and I wanted to do liquor door-to-door -door delivery. Absolutely, there is no better market than Goa to do this work. And, uh, and that's a great opportunity it's a great opportunity it should be backed with a app and technology but uh, still the state licenses are uh, complex uh, so uh, but whosoever would crack it uh, would would really take that market it's a it's a no brainer uh, you know most of the states including goa revenues run on liquor and what are harm you're doing in delivering it to home and and, and especially in these times uh, with covid uh, Bombay has allowed that. They are doing uh, liquor delivery. Their delivery is allowed, uh, uh, but there are stupid conditions. Uh, but uh, I'm sure, like pharmacy, it has taken some time. Opposition, people don't want to do it. They don't want to disrupt it. These whole vendors and liquor vendors, L1, L2 license holders, they would hold it. They would like to not give this, but disruption, you cannot hold for too far. Uh, if customer wants it, customer wants it. And that's how it would be. So friends, uh, hopefully I was able to give you some uh, uh, ideas, some thoughts. It's a very interesting time in India where all we are there. I sometimes look at that, what I did 24 years back, if I get an opportunity to do it now, I can do 10x of what I did. Uh, this is a perfect time of entrepreneurship in this country. And uh, perfect because it's not affected by anything. It's not affected by policies. Earlier businesses were driven from policies. Only few people used to benefit. Now you can do anything you want to do. And, uh, and you are not limited by somebody's policies or wrong policies or anything else. There is a lot of liquidity in market, uh, a lot of uh, opportunities in the market, uh, good talent in the market. We have a lot of educated people who can work for you. But you need to have that mission. You need to have that mission of starting your own successful entrepreneurial journey. And that's what Franchise India has been doing in last uh, helping people to start their right entrepreneurial journey. And uh, we help them to really start their business. I'm conducting a special uh, uh, event, which is on Republic Day 26th. 
and uh, 26th is a date where i have kept myself to talk to uh, 40 entrepreneurs would be entrepreneurs people who want to start a business and they want to set up a 20 minute discussion with me uh i have two purposes one i want to really talk to some investors see their mindset because sometimes i don't have a very big company and millions of entrepreneurs are touching my team and company but not directly with me so i get an opportunity on that day to really talk to 40 people and uh, see where they're coming from what mindset they have and how can i help them uh it's a it's on a first come first basis an appointment and uh, and that slots my team would handle and my uh, um, office uh, would handle i have a direct office which uh, which handles my appointments so they would handle uh, the appointments uh, on that day and uh, and second purpose also is uh, that i i genuinely want to help uh, some uh, people who have a lot of confusion and they feel that they need some answers and honest answers and even the honest answer after 20 minute call i will say you are not rightly uh, ready for doing on the journey now maybe wait for another couple of years uh, that might be helpful because you might need to listen from somebody what is it right to do so if you are interested to set your appointment for that day uh, on republic day uh, uh, please reach out to us and uh, and reach out to kanika she's written her number uh, she handles a big team uh, and she would be uh, handling that and uh, and send to our hotline number hotline number is franchise india's hotline number is 9717683838 9717683838 again i will repeat 9717683838 7-6-8-3-8-3-8. what's up your details what's up what you want to discuss somebody would call you up and set your appointment and uh, and this would appointment would be directly with me we can do a direct zoom call and uh, and bring your notes uh, bring your notes your questions uh, even if you want to send it before you want to set this call to have a meaningful 20 minute discussion uh, because i want to achieve 20, 40 uh, this is my personal target i want to achieve 40 calls that day and uh, and and if i can do that would be the right uh, piece of celebrating our republic day really doing meaningful work uh, and that's something which is uh, very important so friends thank you very much for joining in and uh, uh, send your feedback uh, any kind of uh, feedback you have anything you want to really hear in the series which we are doing with success on your please reach out to that also and i'll be more than happy to take it up in following series so thank you very much take good care of yourself uh, always remember the date uh, the two important events in your life when you start the business and when you exit and create wealth and please share your success stories with us uh, whenever that happens and uh, and we will be very excited to see that we made also some difference in somebody's life thank you very much thank you very much for taking time out Thank you.